New build leasehold homes in England are caught in a cycle of rising fees and unsellable homes, according to a witch investigation. After receiving almost 200 letters from leasehold property owners regarding 19 different house builders and housing associations, which launched an investigation into what they describe as a deepening leasehold crisis. One of the people they spoke to is Andrea Millwood. Andrea bought a Taylor Wimpy house in Prescott six years ago. She's now been told her house is unsellable as the ground rent continues to rise. Before we bought it, we didn't know anything about leasehold at all. Um, the salesman told us it would be leasehold and it would be £295, and they didn't advise us that that would change at all. But what they did say was that we could buy the freehold after two years, but within 10 years at 10 times the annual ground rate for 2950 So we were happy enough with that. That's what we intended to do. Did you have that in writing or was that just verbal? That was verbal. How did you discover that this ground rent fears was doubling? Our neighbour knocked on in January last year and said, do you know your ground rent is set to double at the end of the year? And I thought, no, it's not, it's not. Because the legal documents we received from the solicitor said that our ground rent doubled every 25 years. So when I checked at my actual lease and worked out what it said, it was written over about three or four different pages in different sorts of segments, and it actually doubled in January this year. And that was in the original lease? It's in the original lease, but it's not written in plain English. Okay. And it wasn't pointed out to us by the conveyance and solicitor. And that's affected your property in more ways than one, because you're having difficulty, I understand it, in selling now. Yeah, because we're now we've got a doubling clause, our ground rent doubled already this year, our house is virtually unsellable. The state agents won't put it on the market. Uh, mortgage lenders won't lend on the property. It's just a, a, a no-go area. And the convincing firm you dealt with to buy this property, in your view, didn't explain it clearly enough to you? No, definitely not. They told us it doubled every 25 years. Um, they never told us that Taylor Wimpy could sell the land on to somebody else. So we weren't told of that. We weren't told that to buy the freehold, it was going to cost between twenty to £40,000. So we walked into this thinking we could buy it for two nine five zero within the first 10 years. And seven years in, we find out it's doubling and that it's twenty to £40,000 to buy. And did you know anything about Taylor Wimpy selling on? Did they tell you they were selling it on? No. We didn't realise it could be sold on. Nobody told us. So your big beef is with Taylor Wimpy, is it? Yeah, I'm furious with Taylor Wimpy that they've been able to do this. Well, they say they set aside a provision of 130 million quid to convert your 10-year lease terms to an RPI-based structure, and they say it resolves the issues about affordability, saleability, and mortgageability. Nobody knows what RPI can do. I've seen what historic RPI is going back over the last 20 years, and some of it goes up to like 17% or further. So if that's the case and RPI reaches that point again, then the ground rent is, again, it, it becomes onerous. But also, Taylor Wimpy... Uh, in the finer print have said that if we move over to RPI, then we take away all right to claim against Taylor Wimpy for anything else. And even if we do try and purchase the ground rent on RPI, the freehold, sorry, on RPI, um, it can still be £20,000 to purchase it, which is way more than 2950 that the salesman told us. So what are you going to do? You're not the only person in this situation. There are presumably more people on the estate are in this situation. Not just our estate, loads of estates up and down the country. It's affecting thousands. So are you getting together with those other people or what? Yeah, we're in the National Lethal Campaign, so people are slowly realising what kind of situation they're in. Only about two weeks ago, somebody from an estate in Widness called me, and she's literally just found out about it, and she's doubling as well. So what, what does the group want to do? It's a hard one, really, because there's so many different house builders involved. And they don't really see it as an issue, but it is a massive issue. So we just have to keep fighting and and keep getting people to understand that this is a huge problem that's facing the housing market. What ideally would you like Wimpy Taylor to do? If they give me my freehold for £2,950, which is what their salesman told me, I would be happy with that. I'm not after any sort of massive compensation. I just want what they promised. And the mess they've left behind after this they're, they're blaming it on the conveyance and solicitor, who they recommended. Um, but they've started this issue off. They need to finish it. That's Andrew Millwood, who lives in Prescott. Now, quite a long statement from Taylor Wimpy, which is obviously important to know. 
We listened, they say, to the concerns and difficulties that some of our customers were facing as a result of their doubling ground rent lease terms and have taken action to put it right. We were under no legal obligation to do this, but we want to help our customers. In April 2017, we announced a voluntary scheme, the Ground Rent Review Assistance Scheme, that is specifically aimed at addressing concerns that have been raised by some customers regarding affordability and how easy it is to sell or get a mortgage on properties with a 10-year doubling ground rent clause. We have now reached agreements with the freeholders who own the leases to enable the significant majority of our customers with a 10-year doubling lease to convert their ground rent terms to an RPI-based structure should the customer wish to do so. This will be done via a legal document called a deed of variation, and if qualifying customers choose to proceed, Taylor Wimpy will both facilitate and cover the cost of the lease conversion on their behalf. These agreements address concerns about the saleability and mortgageability of these properties by making the ground rents much more affordable. We're also in advanced discussions with freeholders who own the remaining small number of doubling leases. All our customers received independent, professional legal advice from yet late regulated legal firms when purchasing their property and signing their leases, the terms of which were outlined simply and clearly. We would expect all solicitors to explain all aspects of the transaction, including the ownership structure of a property and any rent reviews to their clients. We are unable to comment on the advice that any firm of solicitors has provided to its client as that is a confidential matter between them. The customer will have been aware that the tenure was leasehold when she bought her property. Like most major developers, we have a panel of independent legal firms that we generally make available to customers to use for their purchase, but only if they wish. All lawyers on this panel are completely independent of Taylor Wimpy, and there's no obligation for any customer to use them. Regarding the freehold sale, similar to all major house builders on developments where homes are sold on a leasehold basis, Taylor Wimpy has always sold its underlying freehold interests. This is because the administrative structures needed to manage a portfolio of freehold interests are very different to a house builder's core business. There's no legal obligation for owners of houses to be notified for a freehold sale. We are unable to comment on verbal information provided to a customer in relation to their freehold at this point of sale. However, if they have any relevant documentation they wish to share, we will be happy to review it. Like most major developers, we have a panel of independent legal firms that we generally make available to customers to use for their purchase, but only if they wish. I think they've said this already. Um, With regard to the deed of settlement, this applies to a full and final settlement of any claim in relation to the doubling ground rent only. It does not, for example, impose any restriction on a customer's ability to take legal action with regards to any other aspects of their lease or against any other third parties should they wish to do so. The customer will have been aware that the tenure was leasehold when she bought her property. Well, it's a longish one, but that's the response. Whether Andrew is happy with that or not, perhaps we'll find out. I don't know. Now, Katie is in Ellesmere Port. Hello, Katie. Hello, Roger. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know who you are. We've spoken before. We have indeed, yes. You're, you founded the leasehold campaign that Andrew was talking about. That's correct, yes. Right. Tell us where you're up to then. Okay. So, at, at, at the minute, there's an awful lot going on behind the scenes in government. Um, and hopefully, we should hear some outcomes of them at the end of July. Um, we're hoping those outcomes will be um, future ha- houses will not be allowed to be sold as leasehold, which is fantastic. Our biggest concern, and we are, we are campaigning really hard at the minute with the National Leasehold Campaign, that existing leaseholders are not forgotten. Because what is going to happen if they ban leasehold houses moving forward is they will be creating a two-tier system yep. which will further disadvantage current leaseholders. So, you know, they, they are helping in one, in one hand, but then they're going to take it away with the other. So it's paramount that they do not forget current existing leaseholders within this whole mess. Do you think, uh, I, I understand you whether she was going to go to court over this, and she said, well, I would be prepared to. Do you think that might have to happen or not? Sorry, can you, can you just repeat that question? Do you think she might have to, Andrea talked about, yeah. I asked her, did, was she going to go to court? Yes. Do you think that might have to happen? Well, in terms of each individual case, it's, it's very difficult to comment. But overall, the, the, the Taylor Wimpy offer that Andrea has been offered, um, for me personally, I feel that that is nothing but a clever PR stunt. It doesn't solve the problem. 
Now, what Taylor Wimpy are not doing is contacting all of the people that they have missold a doubling ground rent to and offering this, this deal that's on the table. Well, of course, they, they said are, they haven't missold it. They said it was perfectly legal. Well, well, yes, but then there's a very fine line between what is legal and what is morally correct. And, and, and that's the problem here, Roger, is legally, all of these developers, because it's not just Taylor Wimpy, no. I won't name the others. There are 19 there's, there's, others, we're told. There's, there's a hell of a lot of people that are caught up in this. And yes, they are legally correct. But morally, this is completely indefensible, completely, which is what is causing um, uproar, because there's categorically no reason why a house should be sold as leasehold categorically not, no reason whatsoever other than to create a second income on that property. So in, you, you sound as though you're slightly optimistic that for future yes. situations it'll be alright, maybe. Yes. yes. But you're really concerned about the many, probably thousands, certainly hundreds of people who are well, caught up in this now. In, in, in this country alone there is, there is over 4.6 million leaseholders. The majority of those are flat, but 1.2 million are houses. So yes, I'm very, very concerned about what the government announcement is going to do for existing leaseholders, which is why we, on the National Leasehold Campaign, are, we are urging the government, we want a full select committee inquiry into how this leasehold scandal has come about. The developers need to be held accountable for the mess that they have created. It's a long fight you're going to have. You certainly aren't going to win on the first instance, certainly. You might win the future stuff, but to, to, to deal with 19, as I understand it, different companies mm -hmm. who have all, in one way or another, done this quite legally, but mm -hmm. you believe immorally. Uh, it's going to be hard. I mean, you, you may have to end up in the courts with test cases, and I don't know if you'd win, because courts don't look at moral values. They look at legal ones. No, they don't, no. Um, and, and it's going to be a long fight. Um, but it is a fight that we are prepared to have, and this is why we need to raise awareness, because there's so many leaseholders out there that, that do not realise that they're stuck in this mess and will not actually realise until they want to sell their property, because it's not just about doubling ground rent. This is all leasehold houses, regardless of, the le of your terms of your lease. They are, they, they are considered toxic assets, and, and nobody in, in knowingly will enter into such an agreement. So it's simply not just doubling ground rent that we, we're campaigning against. I personally have not got a, current, um, a doubling ground rent, but that doesn't mean I'm happy with what I've been. I feel like I have been completely missold and led up the garden path. Andrea, the piece, person we spoke to earlier, talked mm. to us about a woman who she knew from last, uh, yesterday or recently, mm. who also just discovered, and lived in with us, just discovered that she was in this situation. If there are people like, I think Andrew's probably helping her out and putting her in touch or whatever, but if yeah. there are people who are thinking, oh, I better check this and discover that they haven't got the situation, how do they get involved with your campaign if they want to? So the campaign is on Facebook and it's called the National Leasehold Campaign. We have over 11,000 members now. Um, we, we, we have a voice in government. Um, the leaders of the National Leasehold Campaign, myself, and there's two others that run the campaign. We are being invited to key um, discussions within government. I can't go into what's being said sure. at the moment. But we, we are part of those discussions. So we are bringing the voices of leaseholders to the highest level. So you really need, everybody needs to get behind the National Leasehold Campaign because we are the voice. We don't have millions of pounds that the developers, the investors have to, to, to target government and, and try and lobby them to say that the problem isn't that big. Actually, we have the voice. We have, we have the evidence. And it was morally wrong, and we're, we're, we're not going to give up fighting. We really, really aren't. Katie, good to speak to you. Keep us in touch with what goes on. We will do. Thanks very much, Roger. Thank nice to speak to you. Nice to have you on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's Katie from Elsewhere, which founded the National Leasehold Campaign. And the Garston resident says, I'm on an estate, and it seems that they inflict ground rent on all these new bills, and our lease has been sold on at least twice, and prices raised. I'd like to know why this happens now when houses mostly are always freehold. It's not as though they do anything regarding the properties. It's something that should be stopped. Well, that's ideally what this leaseholders, or national leaseholders organisation is about. If you want to join them and support them, there are 11,000 people getting angry about all this. Maybe you should be one of them.